If you're really in a rush, like if you're late for your spin the bottle session with your local little people club, then don't worry, I'll give you an answer within the next few seconds. However, if you want a deeper explanation and more insights, then stay tuned and blah 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 blah. Step 1. If, well not if, when something inevitably upsets you and evokes negative emotion, before you act upon the fact that you're mad or sad or you feel bad first, ask yourself, what is the best course of action? Despite your feelings, you have to find what's the best thing you could possibly do in your situation. You cannot let the fact that your neighbor stole your cookie be the reason you spend the rest of your life in jail for vehicular manslaughter. Step 2. You simply have to follow whatever course of action you have decided is best, without complaint or a dramatic show of your emotions. If you complain or dramatically display your negative feelings, according to the Stoic, you are what is known as a biatch. And that's it. Of course, there is a lot more to it, but in essence, that's it. If you get good at that two-step little process, you will become Stoic. But that doesn't mean you are a Stoic, you know? Being stoic simply means being really good at deciding the best course of action despite how much you want to strangle someone, and not complaining about it. However, in order to become a stoic, there are lots of virtues and stuff that you must really internalize and incorporate into your life. Becoming a stoic takes a bit longer to explain, so grab your soy sauce and butter popcorn and strap in, I guess, because we're about to delve into the stylin' world of stoicism. <clears throat> Stoicism is a philosophy founded by the awesome and also kind of nutty as a fruitcake Zeno of Citium. In his early life, Zeno was a merchant, due to the fact that his father was also a merchant. He traveled from place to place, both searching for financial opportunities and also secretly a meaning in life. One day, when Zeno was around 22 years old, he got shipwrecked, stranded, left to his own boredom. In his boredom, he found a book. The book was called Memorabilia by Xenophon, or Xenophone, or Xenophon? Xenophone? I don't fucking know. And in this book, there was one character who really stood out to Zeno, Socrates. Socrates gave Zeno such a hard-on that he decided, hey, being a merchant sucks, I'm gonna be a fucking philosopher. And to the chagrin of literally any parent with a child who has a degree in philosophy, he did so. And thus, Stoicism was born. Zeno spent the rest of his life teaching in Athens, where he was revered for truly living the way he taught the world to live, and improving the lives and behavior of those who listened to him. Until one day, he stubbed his toe. Apparently, looking at his broken toe, he decided that it was a sign that he should fucking strangle himself to death, and the crazy bastard actually did it. Goodbye Zeno, hello literally every other stoic practitioner ever. Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epictetus, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Arnold Schwarzenegger, freaking LL Cool J, and many, many more. Stoicism is a set of beliefs that include the idea that virtue is both enough for one to be happy and more important than happiness itself. And everything happens because everything that happens is necessary, therefore the only thing to do is to be okay with whatever happens. The only things one can control are one's thoughts and actions, and one should make their thoughts and actions as virtuous as possible in order to be good both because being good is better than being happy, and being good will make one happy. It's not worth wallowing over what you can't control because it was destined to happen regardless of how you feel or what you do about it, so it's best to accept it for what it is and continue to be virtuous despite how unfortunate one's circumstances can become. Stoicism is so popular perhaps for a few reasons, one of which being that you don't necessarily have to believe in God or gods or the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, which is a legally recognized religion in New Zealand and the Netherlands is called Pastafarianism and it's awesome, or anything of the sort, but if you do, that's also okay. Meaning that Stoicism is open to anybody, no matter what you believe. However, more importantly, if you haven't noticed yet, the world is kind of, oh, I don't know, batshit insane and completely out of control? When was the last time you asked yourself, how screwed am I? If you're anything like me, it was 10 seconds ago. And also, if you're anything like me, the answer is very. I mean, think about it. How's work going? Or for the younger fellas out there, how's school going? I fall into the second category, and my list of concerns are about as long as Santa's naughty list. School sucks. What if work life is just as bad? With my current academic performance, will I even have a work life outside of being a janitor at Popeyes? If I do end up being a janitor at Popeyes, what was any of this even for? If I don't end up being a janitor at Popeyes, what was any of this even for? I don't know about you, but sitting in an office all day doing the work that someone else wants me to do doesn't sound all that fun. But hey, at least I'll have a stable income and a stable life, right? Well, no matter what the hell you do, there's always a possibility of, pardon my French, 
Shit hitting the fucking fan. Anyone can lose their job at any moment. And if that's what all the schooling is for, what's even the point? But more importantly, hating your life with money doesn't seem all that different from hating your life with no money. So, what's even the point? If school is a tutorial to work life, and I already hate schooling, what does that mean? What's even the point? And keep in mind this is all IF I end up with a decent job, which could very well simply not happen. So again, what's even the point? What? I'm going to wake up every day to do shit other people tell me to do all day every day so in the future I can wake up every day to do shit that other people tell me to do all day every day? What is the point? That touches upon about 2% of what I'm actually worried about in the school slash work level, but there's a whole nother stage to this shit storm. Hey you, did you know that you could literally die any second? I hate to break it to you, but the floor could suddenly open up and a giant fucking spaghetti god could open its noodle jaws and swallow you unprecedentedly and there's nothing you could do about it. Anything is possible. Uh, is that good or bad? Spontaneous human combustion is a real thing. Let me give you an example. Good old Mary is walking to her kitchen. She's going to make a casserole for her grandkids. Isn't she so nice? She reaches into her fridge and all of a sudden she fucking explodes! Bye bye Mary. Hello pile of ashes in a deliciously burnt casserole. Jesus. I'm sorry. Let's think about life for a second. You are thrown onto this little space rock which rotates around a giant exploding fart until you eventually die. You don't know when or how or why it will happen, but it will, and you have to live with that. What happens after you die? I guess we'll see. Are we alone in this universe? That's kind of terrifying. Are we not alone in this universe? That's kind of terrifying. If the existential, spacey, death thing doesn't really get to you. Have you seen the president of the US? One of the most powerful people in the world doesn't know where he is half the time. There's a 50% chance that if you showed this man a picture of a donkey, he'd confuse it with Mary's fiery casserole and start eating it. And this motherfucker, and this one too, and, and this one, and this guy, ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy ass people with lots of power and probably not the best of intentions. One of these dudes has a bad day, and say goodbye to your entire way of life. We live in a world where we have so little control over what happens to us, and so little knowledge of what will transpire. There are an infinite number of ways to die, an infinite number of possibilities of things to happen to you after you die, an infinite number of ways your life can go to shit at any moment, an unknowable possibility that you are doing everything wrong, a pretty good chance that you have no idea where your life is going to be in a few years, and a possibility that anally probing aliens are out to stick a stick up your ass. With this completely out of control trajectory of one's life, how is one supposed to avoid crippling anxiety? How is one supposed to avoid the depths of depression? How is one supposed to not go fucking insane? Stoicism is a decent answer to that question, I guess. In a way, stoicism is knowing that the world wants to fuck you in the ass, but you enjoy it, so it's okay. <laughs> What? In a world where you have so little control over what happens to you, the only way to truly live seems to be that you have to just be chill with it. Flat tire, car on fire, is your dog a stupid crier? Dog dead, shit in the bed, girlfriend give your brother head? That all sucks, but it could very well happen to you, or me, or any of us. Something bad will inevitably happen to you, and there's no way to avoid that fact. There are things you can do to make it less likely something bad will happen, or you can try your best to decrease the severity of the possibilities that could happen. For example, don't join the mafia? But even for people who do everything they can to make life as stable and happy as possible, something will eventually happen. And when it does, a stoic would stare at the bad thing that just happened, and take a deep breath and go, okie dokie, and accept the situation without complaint, and do the best thing that they can, and move on. This is, of course, a lot easier said than done. It takes time and practice to develop the mindset where you can look at your house while it's burning to the ground and say, okie dokie, but once you master this okie dokie mindset, life will become infinitely more tranquil and happy. The world, despite almost having complete control over you, would at the same time not be able to lay a finger on you. You could be both an unstoppable force and an immovable object, but it takes time. Here are some stoic beliefs that if you internalize will help you master this okie dokie mindset. By the way, I'm far too stupid to think of any of this stuff on my own, so these are all my interpretations of stuff taught in the book Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. It's pretty awesome, you should check it out if you're interested. Don't expect things. If you're starving and expect a 7 course meal full of French shit you can't pronounce, but you end up with just a burger, you would be disappointed. However, you're still hungry, and you still have a burger. So if you simply didn't expect anything in the first place, you would have been so much happier in the moment. Don't concern yourself with the thoughts or opinions of others. This is pretty obvious, but yeah, just don't. Why would you care about them if they only really care about themselves? Don't act as if you will live forever. 
Death is inevitable and unpredictable. You could die at any moment. The only way to live life to the fullest is to accept this and act accordingly. Everything that you do must be done with a purpose. You don't have enough time on this rotating shitstorm to have any time to waste. You must be able to stand on your own. If you are a tree and the only thing that's keeping you up is the fact that you are leaning on another tree, at any moment the other tree could say fuck this shit and fall, and you along with it. Don't be ashamed to be helped. Now, being helped is different from requiring others to hold you up. You must be able to stand on your own, yes, but many things require the help of others to be accomplished, and that's okay. External things cannot directly influence how you feel. External things can't directly affect how you feel. They can't poke around in your brain and force you to feel a certain way, meaning that every negative thought and emotion you feel comes from you. This one is a bit of a stretch, I know, but bear with me for a sec. If it all comes from you, you can learn to control it and make your thoughts tranquil. If someone shits on your porch, you could think, I'm very angry that someone shat on my porch. Or you could think, hey, at least they didn't shit on my face. If you can take this mindset and apply it to every part of your life, you will gain so much control over your feelings. The universe is transformation. Life is opinion. Big men Marcus Aurelius. Life is always changing, and what these changes mean are up to you. Don't complain. Another quote from big men Marcus Aurelius, choose not to be harmed and you won't feel harmed. Don't feel harmed and you haven't been. By complaining you choose to be harmed, and very annoying. Accept everything that happens as necessary. If you develop a mindset that everything that happens is necessary, it makes stupid things feel less stupid. It's okay and often good to have no opinion over something. Everybody feels as if they have to label or judge everything, which can be kind of mentally taxing. So just remember, it's okay just not to have an opinion over something. We suffer more in imagination than in reality. Seneca. Learn to control your imagination, and you learn to control your quality of life. Stoicism is not controlling the outcome. Stoicism is not having no emotion. The world is nuts, and those who thrive in the world are those who learn to out-nut this nutfest of a world. The most sane people are the most crazy, because it takes a crazy person to be okay in this shitfest. And in a world where insanity is the new sanity, life can seem incredibly daunting to the untrained mind. You don't know what's going to happen. The only thing you can control is yourself, and in the grand scheme of things, that ain't much. The world could end at any moment. Your life could do a fucking ninja backflip into a direction you didn't even know existed whenever it so pleases. Stoicism is realizing all of this, but being able to be in the moment, and look down, and say, hey, I have feet. I should be grateful that I have feet, because some people don't have feet. However, if I lose my feet, that's okay, because wheelchairs exist.